All right, so let's put some numbers on this and see what happens. So I've drawn things a little bit smaller. We know that I is constant, current is constant. We know that the current lags the voltage. So those are the two rules. Okay, I've put Sokoto up here because we're going to be using this now. Okay, so here's the process. I didn't really draw it out this way the first time, so I could blow it up a little bit. We could talk about it. But what I suggest you do is you draw the three triangles every time. So we have the impedance triangle. We have a voltage triangle. And we have a power triangle. Okay. Why do we not have a current triangle? Because the current is constant. That's the thing that we're going to use to build all of the triangles. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the current vector. So there's I equals. I'm going to draw it a second time. I equals. And I'll draw it a third time. I equals. Whatever the current is, it's only going to be that thing everywhere throughout the circuit. I, what's the total current? What's the current through the resistor? What's the current through the inductor? Doesn't matter, always the same. So, whoops, I better do this. So that's, that's the anchor upon which we build the rest of the ideas. Okay, so, There is the vector for whatever version of impedance is in phase with the current. Okay, well, let's come over here. There's the same vector representing the voltage that's in phase with the current. What voltage is that? It's the voltage dropped across the resistor. So this is E subscript R equals, back here, this is simply R equals. And up here in the power triangle, this is the true power. Okay, the current lags the voltage. Well, we've drawn the current vector there, so if it's lagging the voltage, the voltage vector is going to have to be up front, which brings it up here. So we're going to place it tip to tail so we can do our vector addition, and that represents the voltage through the inductor the coil okay which means in phase with that vector is this vector in the impedance triangle which represents XL and this triangle over here in the sorry this vector in the power triangle which represents the reactive power so those are the two vectors we're adding together okay to get all so well, let me finish the triangles, and then we'll talk about that. So the hypotenuse of our th triangles, sorry, that's supposed to be a straight line, that is the impedance, Z equals, okay, the hypotenuse of the voltage triangle, that's the total power, sorry, the total voltage, or the applied voltage, okay, EA is the applied voltage, which is the total, that's the voltage provided by the power supply, and the total power, if you will, the hypotenuse of the power triangle is the apparent power. X. Apparent power right there. Okay, so I mentioned in the last video that these are just right angle triangles, and so we're going to use sine, cos, tan, and Pythagoras to solve these. There's one other thing we're going to use, well, a couple of other things we're going to use to solve these, which is not about the triangles, but it comes back to the fact that we are trying to calculate variables in an electric circuit, which means we can use Ohm's law and we can use the power equation. Okay, so if you know that big fancy power wheel, all of those equations come into play. Now, here's the trick about that, and we'll practice it, but I want to talk about it for a moment first. When you decide to apply, when you want to use Ohm's law, for example, 
Okay, so Ohm's law uses the three variables voltage, current, and resistance. Okay, I'm going to start using the word impedance instead of resistance. Okay, but here are our impedance values, here are our voltage values, and as far as current is concerned, we only have one to worry about. Okay, the trick is when we're using Ohm's law to, to find a variable in another triangle, to, to use an impedance value to find a voltage value, we must work within the same side of the triangle. Okay, it, that's no different than last term, okay, when you were looking at a DC circuit, okay, you had to use variables within a location. All right, you couldn't talk about um, this resistor, okay, um, multiplied by this current flowing through it to find the total voltage of the circuit. Okay, you can't mix and match your locations. You can apply Ohm's law here. Okay, and the same is true here. Okay, what I want you to recognize, so here's the angle theta, which is the same in all three triangles. Whatever we calculate angle theta to be, it's one number for all three triangles. Okay, the adjacent is all about the resistor. Okay, so what is the value for R? What is the voltage drop across that resistor? And what is the work being done by the resistor? So the adjacent, that side of the triangle, is all about dislocation in the circuit. The opposite, all of the vectors at 90 degrees, this is the inductive reactance of the inductor. This is the voltage drop across the inductor. And RP is the power calculated at the inductor. And the hypotenuse of our three triangles are all of our total values, okay? What's seen by the power supply, the, the circuit's totals, okay? So we can apply Ohm's law, or we can use the power equation to get a power value, but we can't mix and match our variables. We have to go across the hypotenuse, or across the adjacents, or across the opposites, okay? Enough talking in generalities. Let's put some numbers in here. The example in the exercise sheet that I put on Blackboard, let's do that. So we have a circuit. The inductor has an inductance of 80 millihenries. So L equals 80 millihenries. Uh, it's connected in series with a resistor of 10 ohms. So R equals 10 ohms and it's powered by 120 volts at 60 hertz. So EA equals 120 volts, and the frequency is 60 hertz. Okay, so what can we do with this information? L, 80 millihenries. Can we put that here on our triangles anywhere? No, doesn't belong. That's all right, we'll come back to that. Let's keep trying. R, 10 ohms. Oh. Right there, R, 10 ohms. Okay. EA is 120 volts. EA, right there, 120 volts. And frequency, 60 hertz. Does that go anywhere in the triangles? No, it doesn't. But that, along with L, is going to be very helpful for us. Because now we can, we can use an equation. So the equation is... XL equals 2 pi FL, which equals 2 pi times 60 hertz times. Now, if you put 80 in there and you throw that in your calculator, you're going to get the wrong answer. With the, when, we, when we revert back to the equation, we have to use the base units. Okay, base units is Henry's. So 80 millihenries is how many Henry's? We have to move the decimal place from millihenries to henries. We have to move the decimal place three times. And because henries is going to be a larger um, scale, it's going to have to be a smaller number, which means we're moving the decimal place one, two, three times to the right so that we end up with 0 0.08 henries. 
that's the number we must use here in the equation, which equals, I'm getting my calculator out, two, where is my pi button? Where did it go? There it is. Two pi times 60 times 0 0.08 equals 30.16. 30.16. What's the units on that number? What did we just calculate? XL is reactance, which is a type of resistance, which is impedance, which is an ohmic value. So XL equals 30.16 ohms. Okay. So here's an equation we all know. I equals E over R. Fantastic. Do we know E? Well, we have one version of E. Do we know R? Well, we have two versions of R. Can we find I? No, we can't. Okay, if we do 120 divided by 30, or we do 120 divided by 10, we are, we are mixing and matching the sides of our triangle. Okay, so we need to make a decision here. So I equals EA over, EA is the hypotenuse, it's gonna have to be over Z. Okay, so this is, this is the generic equation, Ohm's law that you guys know all, uh, and learned a long time ago. I could give you, quite honestly, at this point in the course, I could give you pages and pages and pages of equations, okay? But, but I don't think it's valuable for you to memorize that equation, because let's try another one. Um, I equals um, ER over R. Okay, those equations, I could fill pages with equations like that, but you don't need to remember them. Remember this one, and you already know this one. And just remember that when you apply these three variables, you have choices. In terms of E, okay, that is voltage, but you've got EA, you've got ER, and you've got EL. Once you make a decision to use EA, now replace R with the appropriate variable. It's either R, or it's XL, or it's Z. Well, because we used the hypotenuse of the voltage triangle, we must finish the equation by using the hypotenuse of the impedance triangle. And so we can take this basic equation and we can build these equations for our specific needs. Okay, now, so we've got a couple of options here. It's still not gonna work out because we still don't have both of these numbers anywhere. Okay, so basically if we want to apply Ohm's law and use 120, we need to figure out what this is, okay? So I suppose that's as good a place to start as any. Let's do that. So what does Z equal? Z equals. So here again, I could, I could give you this equation and say you need to memorize this along with a million others, okay? But I would say it's much wiser to just say, let's apply the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, and the Pythagorean theorem says that the hypotenuse is equal to the square root of adding up the squares of the other two sides. And so it's r squared plus xl squared. Okay, I could ask you to memorize that formula, but I think that's a waste of your effort. I think we can build that formula easy enough by just taking Pythagoras, looking at the triangle, and pulling out the appropriate variables to write the equation. And now I can simply plunk in the numbers for the variables. Okay, so R is 10 ohms, so it's 10 squared plus XL. We've calculated at 30.16. 30.16, square that, and let's find out what we get. So, on my calculator, 10 squared plus 30.16 
squared is equal to, and there's a big number, and now I just need to find out what the square root of that is. So the square root of that number is equal to 31.77. 31.77 units. We calculated for Z, impedance, ohms. So right here, Z equals 31.77 ohms. So tell me about what you think of the shape of my triangle. My question is, tell me what you think about this angle theta. What's it going to be? I've drawn it so that it's maybe about 30 degrees. Okay. Is it more like 10 degrees? Or is it more like 80 degrees? And we can conclude a particular direction by looking at these numbers. Look at the hypotenuse is the longest of the three sides, which it must be, or we've made a mistake, but it's not very much longer than XL. So if I were to attempt to draw these triangles to scale, they would actually look a lot more like that, okay? I drew the triangles right up front before I ever even considered any numbers. Okay, so I understand that it's not going to look like that, even though it should. Okay, but I know that when I calculate my angle theta, I'm going to be expecting something that's probably up in the neighborhood of 80 degrees. Okay, 80, 85, I don't know, maybe only 75, but it's going to be up there crowding the 90 degrees, right? So let's do that next. Okay, we have all three sides. So quite frankly, we could use any one of sine, cos, or tan. Okay, as I indicated, um, to minimize rounding error, both of these are calculated numbers, but we calculated this one first, and then we proceeded to use it to calculate this one. So I'd be inclined to go back and use that number with the given number, which is our opposite and our adjacent, which means sine, cos, or tan. Well, sine and cos both use the hypotenuse, which is what we've decided we're going to try to avoid. And so it's tan that uses the opposite over the adjacent. So the equation is the tan of the angle theta equals opposite over the adjacent. What we're actually trying to calculate is not the tan of the angle, but the angle itself. So it's going to be the angle theta equals the opposite over the adjacent, so the opposite is 30.16, 30.16 over the adjacent, which is 10 arctan. Okay, let's see what this gives us. 30.16 divided by 10 equals second function tan button, which is the arctan, equals 71.66. So the angle equals 71.66. So I was saying something up around 80, 85 degrees. I seriously overestimated that, but we're still, you know, crowding 90 degrees as opposed to crowding zero degrees. Okay, that certainly is giving us an angle that's, I erased this, I should have left it here, that's, that's approaching that kind of idea. So I feel pretty good about that. 71.66. 71.66 degrees. Now keep in mind that these three triangles represent different variables of the same circuit. So I can take that number and I can transfer it over here. So this is 71.66 degrees and this is 71.66 degrees okay they are all the same triangles they're all the same angles they just have different magnitudes of sides to to represent the different variables okay now here in the voltage triangle okay um, I could use 
Sokotoa to find the other two sides, the unknowns. We know the hypotenuse, we know the angle, we can, we can calculate the, the other two sides. I think I want to come back here for a moment. Let's find out what the current is. Okay, so the current equals EA over Z. EA is 120 volts divided by Z, which is 31.77. What does that equal? 120 volts divided by 31.77 ohms is equal to 3.78 amps. 3.78 amps. I've got a little bit of rounding going on here, but that's okay. But let's check our work. Okay, I recommend you do this just to see where, where things are at and if things make sense. Because we have another equation here that we could also use to calculate the current. ER, oh, we don't have ER yet. I guess we need to do that. I'm going to suggest that we do the calculations to find out if we get the same number here for current. Let's do that. So we need to solve for ER. Okay, so ER is the adjacent, and we have the hypotenuse and the angle. So are we going to use sine, cos, or tan? We're trying to find the adjacent, so sine is not going to help us out. So we have the adjacent in cos and tan, and cos has the hypotenuse, which is the number that we've got. So it looks like cos is going to win this one. So the equation is the cos of the angle theta equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse. We are trying to solve for the adjacent, so it's going to stay there cos of the angle theta and the divided by the hypotenuse the H is going to come across equal sign and up so it's going to be the cos of the angle times the hypotenuse so let's find the cos of the angle so the cos of 71.66 multiplied by the hypotenuse which is 120 volts 37.76, 37.76 volts. Okay, so now when we come back here, ER, 37.76 volts divided by R, which is 10, is going to give us a current of 3.77. We calculated here 3.78, so we've got a little bit of rounding error happening, okay? I, don't worry about that. All right. I would say, notice what I've done is I've carried two decimal places all the way through, which is going to get us very close. All right. On a test, it's going to be a multiple choice test. All right. And I'm going to give you four numbers to choose from. I'm not going to ask you is 3.78 the right number or is 3.77 the right number. I'm not going to ask you that question. I don't care about rounding error. I don't care if you can carry 10 decimal places. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to anticipate common mistakes and give you numbers that are definitely wrong based on going in a, in a particular direction, which was an error. Okay, and the four numbers you're going to have to choose from are going to be very different. All right, I'm not going to be testing you on, on rounding error. So, so don't stress over it. Okay, carry a couple of decimal places and be okay with the notion that this number and 3.776 Okay, are the same number. You come around from a couple of different directions to get to the same place and you end up that close, you're in the right place. Okay, so this 3.78, we could call it 3.77, I don't care. We can write it here. We can write it here. Okay, we don't need to repeat ourselves, but it's in recognition that that number carries on from start to finish. Okay? Um, now, we could use, um, to calculate the opposite, we could use sine. The sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Um, let's do that quickly. I'm going to have to erase some stuff here to make room. Okay. But we could say we're trying to calculate EL. Um, so if we want to use um, sine, OK, 
Okay, the sine of the angle theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. This is the opposite we need to isolate for. So the opposite equals the sine of the angle theta times the hypotenuse, which means, so again, instead of me just dumping equations on you, you can figure it out for yourself. This is easy. Now we're just going to take the equation and we're going to sub in the appropriate variables so that the opposite is what we're trying to solve for, which is actually EL, the voltage drop across the inductor, is equal to the sine of the angle theta multiplied by the hypotenuse, which is EA. So there's another equation that we built from what we already know, which is using the appropriate variables within the triangle that we are working. Okay? So solve for EL right there. Now I have another suggestion. Instead of using sine to calculate for EL, let's use Ohm's law. So E equals I times R. Okay? Well, again, we've got to make sure we're using the right variables. So specifically, what version of voltage are we solving for? It's EL. EL equals, well, we don't need to worry about what version of I. Current is constant. So EL equals I times, what version of impedance are we looking for? Well, EL is the vector at 90 degrees. It's the opposite of our triangles. So when we come back to the impedance triangle, it's the vector at 90 degrees. The opposite of this triangle is XL. Okay, so let's just do the math here and find out what we get. So let's try the first equation. And it is the sine of 71.66 degrees times 120 volts is equal to 113.9 volts. Down here, we have I, which is 3.78 amps, times XL, which is 30.16 ohms, is equal to 114 volts. So that's awfully close. We're just off by 0.1. So, so again, we've come around to the answer from a couple, a couple different directions and we've landed in the same place. So 114 volts. Okay, fantastic. So let me see, that leaves us with just the power numbers now, right? So let's move on to that. Okay, so the equation is P equals E times I. There's the equation that you learned last term. If we're going to apply it again, we can use it. We just have to make sure we are specific. So what version of P do we want to calculate for? Well, let's start with the hypotenuse, the apparent power. So AP equals what kind of voltage? If we're looking for the apparent power, we must use the applied voltage, EA times I. Okay, remember I doesn't matter. Current is constant. You don't have to worry about picking the, the right one. Okay, that's the apparent power. Uh, true power, true power is the adjacent down here, the zero degree vector. So the voltage is going to be ER, ER times I, and finally reactive power equals reactive power is over there. It's going to be EL times I. So let's throw these in our calculator see what we get. So I is 3.78 amps times 120 volts equals 453.6. So that's the apparent power, 453.6. And what's the units for this? Apparent power is volt amps. Next is the true power. 3.78 amps times 37.76 volts is 
142.7. And what's the units for true power? Watts. And the third time, reactive power is equal to 3.78 amps times, uh, where is it, right here, EL, 114 volts is 430.9. So 430.9, and the units out here, VARS, volt amps reactive. So there we go, those are all the variables. There's one more that I want to tell you about. I didn't mention this in the previous video. Now that we have the numbers in front of us, let's talk about it. Actually, I can leave that there. Um, so keep in mind that this actual triangle, if we were to try to draw it more to scale, would look like this. Okay? Remember I said that this vector at zero degrees, the adjacent of our triangle, okay, the true power, is the power that we actually use. That's what does work for us. The hypotenuse, the apparent power, that's what we get a bill for at the end of the month. Okay, That's how much power the power supply, whoever it is providing the power, whatever it is providing the power, actually has to put into the circuit in order for this work to be, to be done. That is the, the demand on the supply. Okay, So this is very inefficient in this particular um, type of of scenario. And this is all relevant when we talk about inductive loads. Now what is an, an inductive load? That's anything with a coil. Specifically, that's motors. Okay, Motors use coils to create magnetic fields to get torque and rotation. And industry is driven by motors. So imagine a large factory with a power triangle that looked like this. That would be an enormous hydro bill at the end of the month. So this, this whole conversation is really, really relevant for them. And in terms of what they do about it, we'll get there with our conversation as we move forward. But, but they, can, they can express this issue okay, in a single term, in a single value. And this value is called... power factor. Okay, what is the power factor? Okay, and in this case they would say that the power factor is terrible. Okay, but we can put a number on that. All right, what is it? So the power factor, PF, is calculated. Okay, it's really all about this ratio right here, isn't it? The power that we use compared to the power that we pay for. And that's it. Okay, so it is true power divided by apparent power. That's it. There's your power factor. And because the apparent power is the hypotenuse of our triangle, which will always be the longest side, this will always be a fraction. Okay, um, a, a power factor of one would mean that we don't have a triangle, we have a straight line, which means we don't have any inductive loads, we just have a resistive load. All right, The voltage and the current are in phase, we have a power factor of one. Okay, so so the, the larger the power factor value, the larger the, the true power number is compared to the apparent power. It will always be smaller, but it's, it's a fractional kind of thing. All right, but that's not the only way we can calculate power factor because these three triangles, they're, they're the same circuit and they have the same angle. And so we can find this same ratio in other places. Okay, here it is right here, the voltage. So it's ER over EA. Okay, that will give us the same answer. We can come back to the impedance triangle. And what is the value of R compared to Z? Okay, same answer. And what are we talking about here? We're talking about the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Well, what is the adjacent over the hypotenuse? Right there, it's the cos of the angle. So if we calculate the cos of the angle theta, we will have the power factor. We will know what that number is. What is that number? In this circuit, it is 142.7 watts divided by 453.6 volt amps. 
and we get a power factor of 0 0.31. Let's carry one more decimal place now, 315. And finally, there's no units on this, but we do want to um, uh, address it a little bit more specifically. Because I lags E, we say that it is a lagging, a lagging power factor. Okay? And that's it. The, the worksheets that I'm providing for you on Blackboard are just more practice doing this. And that's what this week's lab is as well. Crunching some numbers, solving for all the variables in a series RL circuit.